So you have a chronic autoimmune condition. You didn't ask for it, you certainly don't want it, and you're trying to live your best life despite having it. Sometimes insult is added to injury when your closest loved ones simply don't understand. My name's Aaron Boster. I'm an MS neurologist in Columbus, Ohio. And a few weeks back, I made a video entitled The 10 Top Reasons That Your Friends and Family Don't Understand Your Multiple Sclerosis. Now, if you haven't seen that video yet, I'll throw a card up here so you can check it out later. But in this video, I wanted to share with you 10 ways that we can help bring our village closer to us, helping your friends and family have a better understanding so that they can be more supportive and help you in your fight to live your best life despite having the condition. Now, don't turn away because all of that starts right now. Number one, invite your friend or family member to join you at the neurologist's office. This is actually a very powerful tool to help a loved one better understand what's going on. In your day-to-day -day life outside of clinic, you're minimizing symptoms and trying to get through your day and live your best life the very best that you can. Oftentimes, friends and family might not be privy to all that goes on struggling with MS. And if you bring them to the neurologist's office, they can sit and they can listen to the exchange where I'll say, have you fallen? And you'll say, well, actually, yes, I have. I'll say, how are things going with mood? And you'll be honest and say, maybe they're not going that well. Watching that interaction or participating in that interaction is extremely valuable, helping a loved one understand the breadth and depth of what's going on. Number two, before you attend clinic with your significant other or your friend or family member, invite them to write down several questions they have for the doctor. This is a great opportunity to elicit from them things that are top of mind, maybe fears that they have or questions that are confusing to them. And it makes them feel a member of the team. It gives them an opportunity to ask the neurologist questions and get answers from the source. It's a very helpful way I find in helping engage the family to become more part of the process. Number three is a powerful, powerful tool. Ask the neurologist to show you and your significant other the MRI images. Now, if that's not standard fare in the clinic where you attend, I would ask the neurologist ahead of time, say, hey, next time I come in, I intend to bring my wife. Would you do me a kind favor? Would you mind showing both myself and her the images of my MRI? Sometimes hearing about spots or hearing about lesions doesn't have a lot of semantic meaning. But when a husband or a wife or a close friend is staring at the MRI and the neurologist is pointing to the brain damage, pointing to the spinal cord damage, showing them the brain volume loss, it can be very, very helpful. They say that a picture is worth a thousand words. And in this instance, I certainly find that to be the case. Number four, Invite your significant other to join you at a couples support group. There are fantastic MS advocacy organizations throughout the United States and abroad, and many of them host couples support groups where husbands and wives and partners will get together in a circle, and typically there's a moderator, and they go through a discussion. And sitting in a room where there's a culture of knowing is very, very valuable. When someone with MS shares that they're fatigued, you can look around the room and all the other people with MS are nodding their heads in understanding. And having the spouse or the significant other or the partner there to listen and participate can be very helpful. It also gives an opportunity for care partners to meet each other and to commiserate about trying to understand this disease together. It creates a a community and it grows your village and it can be a very, very useful tool for you and for your immediate family and friends. Number five is a sensitive topic, but it's an important one and I'm not going to shy away from it. Number five is to work to not minimize your symptoms with your loved ones. Now this deserves a few words. Sometimes people impacted by MS strive to hide their symptoms. They're very scared that they're going to appear like they're whining or complaining. And so as a result, they minimize the troubles that they're having. The problem with that is that the village around them, their friends and family, don't know what's going on because they're not sharing. 
I challenge you to be more forthcoming, to sit your spouse down, sit your partner down and say, hey, listen, I want to just make you aware that this is a trouble that I'm having right now and give them an opportunity to ask you questions. If you approach it from a place of honesty and love with a goal of improving communication, I don't think that they're going to think you're complaining. What will happen, however, is they will become a better advocate and ally. And it massively helps the relationship in understanding about MS. As many of you know, I created this YouTube channel to help empower, energize, and educate people impacted by MS, meaning patients and care partners and practitioners alike. My sixth tip sounds a bit self-aggrandizing, but hear me out. If you see a YouTube video on my channel that you think your friends and family can benefit from, hit the forward button and share it with them. Send them a video that caught your attention and then follow up and say, hey, did you watch that video? Could we talk about it? What did you think about it? I created this channel to help educate families in between visits. And you can leverage the information to have provocative conversations with people in your village. Try it out. Taking a disease modifying therapy is a pretty big deal. There are side effects to consider. There's tolerability issues and putting up with a shot or pills twice a day or going to the infusion center. And tip number seven is to invite your significant other or your care partner or close friend to participate in taking the disease modifying therapy. If you go to an infusion center, invite your friend to come with you so they can see all that's involved. They can see that they spike a vein and run a medicine and that can kind of make it feel more real. If you take a self-injection, involve them in that process. Ask them to sit with you and maybe hold your hand while you do it. If you have to take a pill twice a day, you may shout out, say, hey, I've got to take a quick break and take my MS medicine. Or you may even say, do me a favor and help remind me to take my MS medicine. Get them involved in the process. In order to live your best life despite having MS, I need you to commit to a lifestyle of exercise. But nobody said that you had to do that by yourself. I encourage you to enlist your village to join you in your efforts at exercise. Explain to them. I have to stay in shape to manage my multiple sclerosis. I'm going to go for a walk. Would you do me a favor and join me? Invite your partner to go to the gym with you or to take a yoga class with you. Bring the village proximal and have them participate in those activities. I'm fond of saying that you are a you expert. You know more about you than anyone else ever could. Maybe second to your understanding of yourself is your inner village, your friends and family that are closest to you and they may actually observe things that you aren't seeing. They're seeing you from a unique perspective from the outside looking in, and that can be very valuable. Ask your family member or your friend, have you noticed anything? Have you noticed that I'm slipping up with my words? Have you noticed that I'm slurring my speech? Have you noticed that sometimes I may stumble when I walk? That can be very, very insightful for your understanding, and it helps them participate in the process. It's empowering to them, and it's empowering to you. Number 10 is about the bedroom. So if that's an uncomfortable topic for you, please skip to the end of the video. So if you're still here, sex is an important part of life and it's an important metric for quality of life, both for you and your partner. Unfortunately, in the setting of MS, the down there's can become very affected. People can have difficulties with lubrication and orgasm. They can have difficulties with obtaining an erection. There's a host of things that can really interrupt the bedroom. And this can create a tremendous amount of strife between uh, a loving couple. It's my strong suggestion that you talk about sex with your clothes on. Have a discussion about expectations. For example, if you're not able to achieve orgasm, that doesn't mean that you still don't enjoy sex. You might love to have sex and be honest and say, look, I'm not going to be able to finish, but boy, would I like to be intimate with you. Having a conversation like that helps you and your partner better understand each other. It makes for a more successful evening, and it brings you closer together. The biggest thing that you could do to help this channel grow is to watch another video. So if you want to up your game, click the video that's on your screen right now. And if there's a tip or a trick that you think can help your family or friends better understand your MS, please leave it in the comments section below. We all look forward to reading it. Until my next video, this is Aaron Boster saying be safe and take care.